so good morning everyone uh, so we'll start today's lecture with uh, the topic on plastics so <clears throat> so you all know that uh, we have been discussing about classification of engineering materials and uh, we have covered the first classification that is metals today we'll discuss on polymers so plastic and polymers they are synonymous you all understand that so this is uh, is a very important yeah so yeah so it is a very important class of engineering materials and uh, lately you'll observe that several products around yourself they are made up of in some form or the other form uh, they are made up of plastics so plastics essentially are uh, basically long uh, basically you know extremely large molecules and these are basically formed by you know uh, these repeating units known as mers so you might have read about these in your school that is uh, in polymers generally they are very large molecules known as monomers which combine together by sharing electrons uh, in the outermost shell and that what what they do is they form these polymers so these polymers they generally consist of an carbon atom and uh, some more elements like hydrogen nitrogen or chlorine so most of these polymers they which are used in engineering applications to make different products so they are made up of uh, these carbon based uh, materials and largely they are hydrocarbon derived so this is uh, you will see uh, here a example of uh, polymer molecules that is polypropylene and nylon so so in this the, the repeating unit is basically highlighted in case of polypropylene uh, what you will observe just so this is the repeating unit we can say in the this uh, polypropylene and this the complete unit is uh, the repeating unit in in, in the nylon so this polymerization reaction is very important to make these polymers so in this basically what happens these monomers or the repeating units they link up together to to form large molecules so polymerization reaction you have already read these are of two types so one is the condensation polymers polymerization reaction in which the small molecules if for example water they condense out and then you have addition polymerization in which the bonding is without any reaction product and the rate of reaction is generally very fast so to accomplish this polymerization reaction basically we need uh, either the form of heat and there can be then need of pressure and often sometimes a catalyst may also be needed to initiate this reaction so the requirement of these three things may vary uh, from polymer to polymer but essentially for any polymerization reaction e either one or more than one of these conditions needs to be fulfilled so now if I, we talk of bonds so this is very important because bonds between these uh, monomers they basically dictate the properties of these polymers as i discussed in case of metals there were metallic bonds in case of polymers we have covalent bonds so covalent bonds basically are the primary bonds uh, which link up the you know uh, the, the different elements in the polymers and these are very strong bonds and then to link up these chains of long chains of polymers we have secondary bonds which are known as the van der waals or the they can be hydrogen or they can be ionic bonds so the primary bonds are here the covalent bonds so these are very strong as i mentioned and the secondary bonds basically these are the weaker bonds like most commonly are the van der waal bonds and you should understand here what is the role of each of these so this will basically uh, be helping in bonding of the elements in the polymer so in the single polymer molecule the different elements will be bonded using covalent bonds and the secondary bonds okay. basically basically this will be helpful in you know linking the chains of the polymer molecules so these are the two roles of the bonds 
chains of the polymer molecules so this is basically done using the secondary bonds so now we see some distinguishing features uh, of these plastics uh, or how they are different than other class of engineering materials so first of all this is a uh, very corrosion and chemical resistant so because you see they are their outermost uh, bonds uh, or the electrons are shared so generally they are very inert to atmosphere or corrosive environment so they don't degrade much in the, that type of environment and are often chemically resistant so even harsh harsh chemicals may not immediately cause some problems with these uh, plastic products since they do not have any uh, you know um, free electrons uh, since there is a covalent bonding there so their electrical and thermal conductivity is very poor so then of course uh, they have very low density because most of them are made up of these uh, elements like carbon uh, hydrogen or maybe nitrogen chlorine so generally these are very light elements uh, compared to uh, the heavier elements like in case of metals like iron cobalt or nickel so since they are made up of these light elements so their density is also very low uh then next important uh, distinguishing feature is their high strength to weight ratio but it is only when they are reinforced to make some composites so in only this is uh, applicable with composites in with that we will discuss that is polymer matrix composites so when they are made up of uh, made, make the composite so in that scenario they exhibit high strength to weight ratio so uh, there is noise reduction in with them because they can also reduce noise to a certain extent they are available in wide uh, choice of colors and transparencies so we can tailor their color by adding these pigments and their transparencies that is transparency uh, with respect to visible light they can also be tailored to make them translucent or opaque so then next is they are very easy to manufacture in complex designs so we have one full module on manufacturing of uh, products which are made up of plastics in that what we will study how different processes are used to make these plastic products and what you will appreciate that most of these designs are very complex and they can be make made very easily when you are dealing with plastics if the same thing it has to be made with metals so there may be very large number of steps which has to be followed so generally a product which is made up of plastic be it having a complicated design will generally cost you very less compared to the same product which is made up of metals so because of the single step or maybe few step manufacturing processes which are used for plastics then they have a very relatively low cost because they are uh, easily available and they are abundant with a lot of hydrocarbons being uh, present so their cost of the these uh, elements is very less so now we move to different applications of these plastics so where they are used so they are used in food and beverage containers packaging that is food packaging uh, they are used in rechargeable batteries so this is one of the new uh, or very potential application which is coming up uh, from these uh, you know uh, polymers so you might have heard about this lithium polymer batteries so i will discuss uh, some examples of special polymers which are even used in batteries so they, their atomic structure has been tailored uh, in order to have some electrical conductivity the idea is my is activated kindly mute your mic deepak deepak is it kindly mute your mic okay so uh, rechargeable batteries which are used in you know several now what we have we, uh, we are surrounded by electronic gadgets so we have mobile phone we have laptops we have other uh, equipment in which we need the equipment to be light in weight 
so that is why these lithium polymer batteries are so important these days and uh, lot of, some of these polymers even are tailored to basically have some uh, electrical conductivity and they are being used in these uh, rechargeable batteries then housewares so you'll find many domestic products around yourself which are still made up of plastics then textiles are there medical devices like scaffolds so what are scaffolds so scaffolds are basically uh, temporary structures provided for you know tissue engineering kind of applications foams for packaging uh, you know sensitive materials paints toys gears etc uh, automotive and aerospace components these are some representative photographs of the products which are made up of plastics or polymers in some form or the other so it may not be it may not be necessary to have a rigid kind of structure but polymers are also known to have a very flexible type of structure if you see this example so all this packaging material we use for food and all this is these are the foams which are used for storing or transporting very sensitive equipment uh, these seats in an uh, aircraft uh, this is basically uh, the scaffold that i was talking here so this is the scaffold so basically this porous structure is basically used for tissue engineering application and these are nowadays made up of polymers so all these pores that you see uh, basically they what they do is they they can house the you know uh, tissue of the some organ and the, we can develop the complete tissue these days this is the basically a rechargeable lithium polymer battery so these are the rechargeable batteries used uh, they are again using polymers so what you will observe that we have a wide variety of applications with polymers and they are have become one of the indispensable part of our you know daily life and we see lot of products around ourselves made out of this so now uh, i'll discuss some more classification uh, in this polymers so essentially there are two types of polymers which are widely used in engineering applications so one is the thermoplastics and another one are the thermosets so we'll discuss one by one so these thermoplastics basically they are good uh, in some aspect that they can be remolded by applying heat or pressure this is this happens because as i discussed earlier they have very loose uh, or very you know uh, uh, weak uh, secondary bonds so since their secondary bonds are quite weak so by applying heat or pressure we can remold them into you know Uh, different shapes again and again so these molecules upon application of heat so since the secondary bonding is quite weak so these molecules they 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 can slide very easily under these shaping forces means for shaping forces in the in this sense uh, indicates heat or pressure and then there is a very important temperature state which is known as the glass transition temperature so please try to understand what is this glass transition temperature so glass transition temperature is a temperature beyond which these uh, thermoplastic polymers they become a very viscous or you know flowy type of a substance so if i will say uh, the behavior so if this is the tg so this glass transition temperature is uh, generally denoted by this tg and we have the melting temperature uh, denoted by tm so what happens beyond below this glass transition temperature the material is brittle uh, and it exhibits itself as some hard relatively hard by itself and beyond this glass transition temperature the state changes to a viscous uh, uh, i can say or a rubbery kind of state and if further if we use uh, you know increase the temperature and here basically what happens it basically melts so glass transition temperature is this temperature where after which it becomes or converts to a viscous state and why this temperature is important because to make any product generally the processing is done in between this glass transition temperature above the glass transition temperature and near the melting point so all the manufacturing or products so this is done in this temperature range 
for these uh, thermoplastic composites. So, the, why this is the reason uh, why we are discussing the importance of glass transition temperature. So, if I can summarize thermoplastics, so thermoplastics are, you can consider them like an ice cream. So, an ice cream, you understand it can be, uh, you know, frozen and it can, again, uh, by reducing the temperature, you can freeze it. And again, if you allow the temperature to increase, it will melt again. And then you can refreeze it again, again by reducing the temperature. So, this ice cream type of behavior is exhibited by these thermoplastics. Now, if we move to the thermosets, so what will happen? In thermosets, there is a different story. So, in thermosets, they have uh, cross links, permanent cross links, which are formed upon applying heat or pressure. So, these cross links, they have a very permanent kind of an arrangement, which does not allow these long polymer chains or molecules to slide over each other, even by applying heat or pressure. So, this is what happens when you apply heat or pressure. So, at that time, the molecules, they are unable to slide over each other. Hence, what happens in this case, the uh, you cannot remold them or reshape them by applying heat in this in this regard. So heat cannot change the shape or you cannot even apply pressure because in this case you have the permanent cross links which are formed by the curing process. So this is similar to a cake. So once the cake is baked, you heat it or you cool it, it will not uh, regain its uh, earlier state. In fact, if you just push it be, uh, he, push it or heat it continuously you will end up burning it up rather than melting so thermosets they can be imagined as a cake thermoplastics can be imagined as ice cream so now these are some of the representative examples of the uh, plastics which are used like the uh, i have discussed abs is there active nitrile butadiene styrene epoxies are there nylon is there and the, they are more polymers are listed there. And these are the special class of polymers three, which are used in the rechargeable batteries. So these are used in the lithium polymer batteries, as discussed earlier. And lastly, we have some lactic based acid, lactic acid based polymers, uh, which are also, some of them are also starch based. So nowadays emphasis is on biodegradable plastics. Because plastics, even they have provided us several, several products, but they are the most important or most significant cause of pollution these days. So you might be hearing a lot to not use single-use plastics or, or there is a lot of emphasis on recycling of plastics. So there is also a need to develop plastics which are you know biodegradable, means they degrade over time. So some natural uh, elements have been mixed like lactic acid or starch. So we have a very uh, good uh, popular example known as polylactic acid based polymer, which is a biodegradable polymer. It is used and nowadays you will find several products which are made using these type of uh, materials. So this is uh, the schematic Bruno. representation of the thermoplastic polymer and thermoset. So you want to Some uh, mic is unmuted. <laughs> Can we mute all the mics? <laughs> yeah, some, some mic is unmuted. Please <laughs> show the last slide. Uh, some mic is unmuted. Kindly mute all the mics, please. We'll have last 10 minutes to discuss any questions. So let me first go through all the content that I plan to cover today. So, oh, as I, yeah, please. Who is there? Who is speaking? Sir, can you mute everyone? Uh, I think I, am to to I don't know who is speaking. 
सर यू कैन म्यूट एवरीवन फ्रॉम योर साइड ठीक है भाई मान ली यू आर ओपी ओए मेरे मारे ही चल चल बूस्ट कर पाला डट डट भाई डट साहेब म्यूट इट एवरीवन चल 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 या समवन इज देयर हु इज पूरा ना डाटी पूरा ना डाटी चट्टान पर डटा को ओ भाई उरे भी बंदा ही बंदा ही उरे भाग गया इस घर में डट जा इस घर में डट जाओ if you can maure and maure identify the speaker kindly let him bas, know bas, bas. he should mute, mute his mic i am unable to identify fresh ya bhai sir if if you will mute yourself then you will be able to see who is speaking and the focus will be on that person who is speaking sir it sahil shoren huh sahil sir sahil if anyone has his personal number can you give him a call Selim, do mute. So I think now it is resolved. Okay. So is my screen visible again? Okay. Okay. So. as i was discussing earlier so this is the schematic representation of the thermoplastic and thermoset so these secondary bonds sorry so these are the secondary bonds which are loosely you know bond uh, the the molecular chains are loosely bond and when applying heat or pressure they can slide but in case of thermosets you have these permanent cross links which are formed after the curing process which cannot be remolded so with this we move ahead to another class of plus polymers which are known as elastomers so you can consider elastomers very similar to a rubber band so what is the special property so these uh, are again amorphous materials as other polymers with a very low glass transition temperature means even at room room temperature you can you know stretch them a lot and upon stretching they have this ability to go undergo this large elastic deformation please consider this term carefully it is elastic deformation means once you remove the external load you can regain the shape so if this material undergoes large elastic deformation so this happens uh, you know without rupture means they cannot Uh, they can avoid failure or fracture because you lo load it uh, uh, significantly also so they can take this large large deformation without fracturing or breaking so generally these materials are quite soft and very low elastic modulus so i already mentioned you can you take this example of a rubber band and if, how this was done basically this is basically a result of vulcanization of the polymer so vulcanization you might have read was is this type of rubber is vulcanized and largely used in, in tires of different automobiles so this type of uh, behavior is exhibited by these elastomers and their structure is quite kinked with they have lot of twist and curl which gives this gives this uh, ability to absorb a lot of shock loading so examples of elastomers may include rubber which are used in tire seals synthetic rubber is there silicones and all so these are some of the examples of the uh, elastomers and if i plot this load uh, deformation curve so then what is going to happen what you observe that is loading and unloading within the elastic region so this is within the elastic region will basically uh, go to the same uh, it will re return to its original state 
but this loading and unloading uh, frequency may also decide this behavior if this frequency is very high so it may get even get fractured very quickly and these materials they are very you know significantly influenced by the external temperature as well so external temperature it also large influences these type of materials their behavior so these are temp we can consider them kind of temperature sensitive materials so now we move to the next category of engineering materials which are ceramics so ceramics are basically what are these ceramics are i can say a lot different than the polymers that we have been discussing so ceramics are basically compounds of the uh, Uh, metallic and non-metallic elements. So these compounds, basically, what they do is uh, they are basically de derived from the uh, uh, this Greek word kermos, which is known as potter's clay. So uh, as if you remember the initial uh, one slide I showed, how the dependence or importance of engineering materials has evolved. So ceramics are one of the oldest. class of materials which are been used to uh, very old times is like 4000 bc in form of pottery and brick so ceramic are divided in two categories so ceramic one is the traditional ceramics which are used to make uh, whiteware tiles brick and pottery and then we have industrial ceramics which are uh, nowadays used to make cutting tools then semiconductors gas turbine components uh, spark plugs etc we'll see some more applications so ceramics that you see around yourself in an uh, in a domestic setting they may be a traditional type of ceramic like clay and other bricks uh, are there but there are a class of ceramics which are used in industrial applications as well so uh, these are you can see some very Uh, interesting photographs of high strength alumina so alumina is a uh, ceramic made up of aluminium uh, and oxygen al2o3 and this this uh, alumina is very stable at high temperature so in many of the high temperature applications the ceramic based components are being widely used this is a uh, gas turbine rotor so what is a gas turbine so gas turbine is basically a device it is an energy conversion device in which basically you allow the uh, hot gases so all the hot gases they they basically fall on this impeller so this impeller then rotates and then it may be connected to a prime mover or an electrical electricity generating equipment so this is a gas turbine and if you replace this hot gas uh, by steam so this becomes steam turbine so you can imagine uh, the temperature of those hot gases if you have a metal kind of an arrangement here so what will what is going to happen the metal is going to basically corrode or experience creep in which it will be getting deformed but we don't have those that type of limitation in case of gas turbine rotors which are made up of uh, ceramics so uh, this this gas turbine rotor particular one is made up of silicon nitride so this is the silicon nitride so what is typical of all these uh, uh, ceramics that they have this metallic and non metallic elements so one uh, like in alumina if you consider so uh, al is basically comes in the class of uh, metals and oxygen is basically a non metal similarly here in silicon i can say silicon is a semiconductor not exactly metal uh, then you have nitrogen which is a non metal so what are the distinguishing features of ceramics so ceramics are basically uh, composed of a mixture of metals and non metals uh, which are combined again by sharing of the electrons so they also don't have any free electrons they are they are also have very strong covalent bonds so there are no free electrons in this regard again their density is less than metals but their density may be higher than polymers so why density is less than metals because i mentioned so one of the uh, you know the uh, this uh, atom it will be a non metal like oxygen nitrogen or carbon 
other may be metal so that is why overall the density may be less than the metal so then generally these are stronger than metals but only in case of compression i discussed in the last class there are different forms of loading so one loading was the tensile loading then uh, another type of loading was compressive then there was shear then i discussed about fatigue loading and then also i discussed about creep loading so now we are discussing about ceramics so ceramics are very good in compression so compressive strength of ceramics is quite appreciable because the atoms are already densely packed and in case of compressive loads so since they have these uh, bonds are su such that they can take these type of loads to a larger extent but uh, the bonds are not very good in case of tensile type of loading hence uh, they are not used in applications where the load is of tensile nature another important uh, characteristic of the ceramics is uh, low resistance to fracture this means they do not have the ability to absorb energy upon impact so the ability to absorb energy upon impact is known as toughness we all we have understood this from the initial lectures but the ceramics they have a very low resistance to fracture this means that if you drop a object which is made up of ceramic from an appreciable height so upon uh, impacting the ground it will immediately fracture into pieces so it won't be able to absorb that potential energy or the this sorry the kinetic energy with which it is falling so uh, the low fracture toughness is the reason for that also so they they are generally uh, having a very low ductility very low malleability so the plasticity or the ability to to be deformed by applying heat or pressure uh, is basically or the ability to be remolded is very poor in case of ceramics so you will not find any wires or any very thin sheets which are flexible sheets which are made up of ceramic materials then they have very high melting point so since these uh, covalent bonds are quite strong which are there in the uh, ceramics so their melting point is very high so this means the you need very high processing temperatures to make products of ceramics so of course uh, since they are very uh, having no uh, free electrons so their uh, conductivity towards electricity and heat is very poor and single crystals they there can be some ceramics which are transparent to visible light uh, so except for glasses which are also in the ceramics in most cases the atoms may be regularly arranged and since they are uh, they, their bonds are complete of the different elements the bonds are complete so they are very chemically stable and heat resistant so this means they can have uh, sustain very high uh, temperatures so next we will discuss about glasses so glasses is basically an amorphous form of the uh, ceramic and these are basically formed by supercooling uh, so what happens by when you supercool it so in that uh, you don't that scenario you don't give it sufficient time for a regular crystal arrangement to be formed so when you supercool it so lot of small crystals they form uh, they are formed very quickly which are often not in a proper order so that is the reason why a glass is amorphous not crystalline so uh, all these amorphous uh, materials they generally melt uh, or freeze over a range of temperature rather than a distinct uh, you know um, temperature so within a range they will have a uh, melting or freezing and behavior of glass we all know it is similar to ceramic means it may be good uh, uh, good transparent to light but it is very poor upon uh absorbing shocks or it has a very low resistance to fracture and we see application of glasses so all the windows container glass glass fiber etc are there so this is a special uh, you know variety of glass glass fibers so which are used uh, 
also used as reinforcement in composites so we will discuss this in the later part so all, uh, all the uh, reinforced plastics in the reinforced plastics this is used as the reinforcement so these are some more examples of the glasses like soda lime glass then uh, lead alkali glass is there borosilicate is there so next are some more applications of these ceramics in general not only specifically glasses so all the electrical insulators i will show the photographs that will make things more clear so all the glasses which are used in infrastructure like buildings or uh, windows uh, then you have these type of uh, insulators which are used with conducting wires high high tension or high voltage wires so you you might observe all these structures these are made, made, are made up of ceramics these are having a high electrical resistance so they insulate the electricity this is a spark plug in which this uh, end tip is made up of a ceramic these are cutting tools so cutting tools are basically used for machining operation so this we will discuss in this uh, course so all the machining processes they use this cutting tool which are made up of ceramic so generally these are quite hard so they can easily remove material from another material so in all the machining operations these type of cutting tools are used which are made up of industrial ceramics i will tell some more examples this body armor in which this body armor is basically this plate is made up of ceramic so why this plate is made up of ceramic because they have a very uh, you know low tendency to absorb uh, sorry low low ability to absorb impacts so what happens when a bullet is fired so instead of transferring that energy to the person who is wearing it they get fractured there by reducing the energy of the bullet then these prosthetic uh, implants or the hip implants they are also made up of ceramics these days so these are some more application of ceramics so this is a special type of ceramic known as bio ceramic this also i will discuss in more detail in subsequent slides these are bearings so all the moving parts like uh, which are there in which you have these these balls which are made up of ceramics so why this is because ceramics are very hard and they can re resist wear means they do not lose material upon relative motion hence these type of uh, applications use the ceramic materials to a larger extent so these are some of the examples of the industrial ceramics like silicon oxide aluminum oxide iron oxide then mixed metal oxides are there and some nitrides are there which are used to form these coatings over different components and you can also see the photographs here so this is uh, all about the lecture for today and uh, i'll just unmute for questions now so i have unmuted so if you have any questions so we can take few questions excuse me sir yeah please yes sir yes. sir my question is about glasses sir okay. uh, what do we actually cool to make glasses i mean what is the the raw product okay so for i think for making glasses you have this uh, silicon dioxide is there this is the main component so you see the silicon dioxide is the main component of course there is a uh, presence of uh, sodium or other type of elements in it so this is in form of like powder so you melt this powder and then you form a liquid upon melting and when you allow it to cool very rapidly you don't allow sufficient time for the crystals to arrange in a regular pattern so that is why all these glasses they are very you know amorphous in nature of course they they have the special ability to transmit light in it not you know uh, having any additives in it so it is a powder kind of an arrangement made up largely made up of silicon dioxide which is melted and then super cooled okay sir so what if we allow uh, it to cool slowly yeah if you will allow it to i think to allow it to uh, cool it very slow so what will happen you will you may get a crystalline kind of structure but other properties 
like uh, for the transparent uh, uh, transparent to visible light and all so those might be lost and i think some more properties uh, regarding the mechanical performance may also degrade so depending on the crystal structure lot of things may change okay sir thank you sir yeah so could you please tell the other name for the loss elastomers due to external temperature dependence external uh, elastomers so elastomers are basically a class of polymers in which uh, they uh, have the ability to take large elastic deformation up, uh, and without uh, fracturing so you can just imagine elastomers as a rubber band so it is basically taking the load you pull it to a very significant extent even it may double its length than the original un undeformed length so even in that regard uh, the behavior is there but what i mentioned during the slide is presenting the slide is that at with change in temperature the ability to uh, show this deformation may change uh, or even it may get reduced so elastomers have no different name but the behavior is largely temperature dependent okay so and so like in case of rubber it usually increases as the temperature increases so uh, is it an exception uh, i am not clear uh, pardon please can you repeat your question so uh, so in case of rubber as temperature increases the elasticity increases so is it an exception elasticity see what see you are you are confusing two things so elasticity is the ability to regain original shape when you remove the external load now if you heat rubber it is just changing its state to a more viscous or rubbery or flowing flowy type of state that is it is it is now changing its state but in if in that state it is not elastic it has just changed its state to a more viscous form in that regard if you will apply some external load it will definitely not come back to the original shape so that is not elasticity please don't confuse this term elasticity is the ability to regain the original shape it will not happen with rubber upon elevating the temperature okay so got it thank you yeah sir is it correct to say that glass is a ceramic yes so why it is very correct to consider glass as a ceramic so because of the inherent uh, some features of glass which are very similar to other ceramics glass is generally considered as a one of the ceramic another reason is because as i mentioned in one of the response to the question that silicon dioxide is the main constituent in glass of course there are other elements and silicon dioxide itself is a ceramic material so while mentioning thermoset polymers you said that a curing takes place yeah so what happens in the curing process okay so what in the curing process what is there so uh, essentially uh, so see what is uh, in there these bonds are there so bonds of the polymers already this this is there so these cross links are absent so when you do the curing process so in curing there is role of heat and pressure so when you provide these two things or maybe one of the thing depending on specific thermoset so this permanent cross links they get developed so curing is nothing but is a process by which we develop these permanent cross links which are absent in the uncured product so that is the curing process and it curing is specifically happens only in thermosets not in thermoplastic so permanent cross links are formed during this process which is known as the curing okay sir thank you yeah sir can you please explain the term brittle in a little more detail yeah so brittle is a term which is given to materials which uh, which which we can consider cannot take much of the external load the external load may be in form of gradual manner or it can be in a impact manner 
so brittle means ability to break into pieces so any material which has the ability to break into pieces is considered as brittle and technically if, if we see uh, 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 there is a term which is known as percentage elongation any material if it shows a percentage elongation less than 5% we consider those materials as brittle and if we see any material which which takes this uh, percentage elongation more than 5% they generally come in the category of ductile materials so i hope this response is good enough to answer your query